When the going gets tough, the tough get going. But when it gets the toughest, what should be your choice to get going? I've had a blast of a day with the two most capable off-roaders in the entry-level performance segment. The 450X from Royal Enfield, which has a brand new liquid-cooled Sherpa engine and technology that has never been seen before in any Royal Enfield. And with the Duke 390 Adventure X, pretty much the king of the hill when it comes to ADV performance. This is the fastest sub 500cc ADV in the market currently and it still is a proper ride to ride. But what should be your pick for the daily? Let's find out. Okay, so I'm an idiot. With all of the off-road motorcycles slapping on an X on their names, I thought Royal Enfield would be no different considering their recent commitment towards modernity. But they didn't. And my dumb little brain processed this after the shoot was done. What a clown, Bhavni. Well, my apologies. Coming back to the topic at hand. The average adventure bike consumer in our country is usually a touring enthusiast. ADV bikes are incredibly comfortable to ride long distances thanks to their upright position, long travel suspension and stability at cruising speeds. The Adventure 390 has been the motorcycle of choice in this specific segment, but the mark was actually made by the Adventure X variant. Talking about the crowd favourite, the 390 Adventure X, this really hit the spot in the Indian market by being 60,000 rupees cheaper than its standard variant. But you do miss out on quite a lot of kit. Like uh, the Medzilla tyres are switched for these MRF Mogrip tyres, which aren't as nice. And you also skip out on a bi-directional quick shifter. You, sk you skip out on cornering ABS, traction control. And the biggest one, in my opinion, is the PFT display goes away for this LCD display, which doesn't have any of the toys. No Bluetooth, no SMS connectivity, no of uh, nothing. Basically, you only have uh, switchable ABS on or off road and off-road mode. And that's it, basically, making this a pretty bare basic motorcycle. On the other hand, the Royal Enfield Himalayan 450X turns all of the weaknesses of the 390 Adventure X into its strengths. Like instead of having an LCD normal black and white screen, you have a TFT display with Bluetooth connectivity, SMS notifications, and even Google Maps on it. It is much better than the LCD display on the 390 Adventure X, making this a very good proposition for exactly the same price. Now, when it comes to the looks, I'm going to leave the preference up uh, for discussion in the comment section because I personally like the way both these bikes look, especially the Duke uh, Adventure X. I love how rugged and futuristic it looks. Plus, it still looks like a road going bike. However, the 450X looks very nice and it's an all new motorcycle. I really like the way the tank looks. I like the way uh, the subframe also extends towards the rear and yeah, since it is a proper build, it's got 21 inch wheels in the front and it's a very purposeful looking bike. However, if you want to not stand out by that much, I would still pick the KTM because it still looks like a KTM at the end of the day. The 450X definitely gets quite a lot of attention. Not only because it's a new bike with a lot of hype, it also gets quite a lot of attractive colors, especially this Arctic camo color looks fantastic. And there's also one that is black with yellow stripes that also looks really nice. But yeah, both bikes look great. You'd let us know down in the comments below what looked better with your justification and the best comment gets pinned. The Adventure X and the Himalayan 450 both retain design elements that are reminiscent of the older bikes. Of course, the Himalayan has a few new features like the TFT screen with Bluetooth connectivity, but the biggest change in the Himalayan is the new engine. Things get pretty, pretty interesting once you start talking about both the engines and the way they behave because they are very, very different. 
वी आर वेरी फेमिलियर विद दी एल सी फोर सेकेंड जेन थ्री हंड्रेड एंड सेवेंटी थ्री सी सी ड्यूक एंजन विच हैज़ फोर्टी थ्री पी एस एंड थर्टी सेवन न्यूट मीटर्स ऑफ टॉक इन दिस बाइक एंड इट इज़ प्रिटी मच द सेम एंजन दैट यू वुड गेट इन एनी ड्यूक थ्री नाइन्टी बट द स्टेट ऑफ ट्यून इज अ लिटिल डिफरेंट फॉर इट टू गेट अ बिट मोर मिड रेंज हाउ एवर दिस एंजन कैरेक्टरिस्टिकली इज स्टिल अ प्रॉपर रेवर इट लवज द टॉप एंड एंड दैट्स वाई यू गोइन टू गेट मोस्ट ऑफ इट्स पावर बट कमिंग ऑन टू द हिमालयन फोर फिफ्टी एक्स दिस इज द फर्स्ट एवर लिक्विड कूल्ड इंजन टू कम आउट ऑफ रॉयल एनफील्ड एंड आई हैव गॉट टू से इट इज अ प्रिटी डिसेंट मोटरसाइकिल एंड द इंजन इज प्रिटी ओके हाउ एवर इट इज इन परफेक्ट सो इट इज अ फोर हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी टू सी सी सिंगल सिलेंडर लिक्विड कूल्ड इंजन विथ फोर्टी पी एस एंड फोर्टी न्यूट मीटर्स ऑफ टॉर्क विच इज अवेलेबल थ्रू आउट द मिड रेंज एंड इट इज क्वाइट अ डिसेंट ब्लॉक वेन इट कम्स टू पुटिंग द पावर आउट इट इज अ डिसेंट फास्ट बाइक येस एंड अब थ्री थाउजेंड आर पी एम इट रेव इट लवस टू रेव बट इट इज वेरी अनरिफाइंड येस दिस इज द फर्स्ट हाई कंप्रेशन इंजन फ्रॉम Royal Enfield. However, there is a very long way to go in terms of refinement. Uh, below 2,500 RPM, the engine knock is very, very apparent, and you just want to switch down. And uh, above 5,000 RPM, the vibrations are very, very strong, making this not much of a tourer. Because I personally would pick the 390 Adventure if I'm not going to be off-roading a lot, since its vibrations shake my body less. But yeah, this. 450x definitely needs some improvement in terms of refinement especially in the higher notes The Adventure 390X uses the underpinnings of the Gen 2 KTM Duke 390, and I've got to say, its chassis and engine share very similar traits to its street spec brother. It is light, agile, and a very engaging motorcycle to ride at the limit. On the road at low speeds, the Duke 390 has the upper hand on the Himalayan when it comes to weight and center of gravity. The Adventure 390X weighs in at just 177 kgs. This is more than manageable for most people and off-road its light and on its toes demeanor make the bike easy to chuck around and manipulate but one of the few things that could turn someone towards the Himalayan is the state of tune on the KTM yes it is a bit more tractable in the mid range compared to the Duke 390 but the engine is still at comfort high up in the rev range making the Adventure 390 quite a handful at full chat off-road Another thing we noticed was that the ABS on the 390 kicked in rather early on the rear wheel while the front provided for most of the stopping power of the motorcycle. All in all, the Adventure 390X is a really good contender as a touring motorcycle. However, it's not perfect in the off-road department, which brings me to the Himalayan. The Himalayan being a completely new motorcycle has a lot to be spoken about. There is a new 43 mm USD front fork that has been tuned by Showa and this suspension along with the tires make it a beast when you go off road. You still get a 21 inch tire in the front and a 17 inch tire at the rear. However, the rear tire is now radial making the bike a lot more agile and confidence inspiring on the road compared to the old 411. The chassis balance is supreme making this munch any obstacle you throw at it on and off the road royal enfields were infamous for having weak brakes in the past while that has changed for the better with the recent bikes the himalayan takes it to another level the front brakes have very good progression and enough stopping power out on the road i relied mostly on the front brakes to bring me down to a manageable speed as i slowed down to enter tighter corners but the rear brake also has enough bite However, I did find that it was a bit too sharp. Even a relatively light tap on the brake lever can generate a lot of stopping force, but once you switch off ABS, it becomes very easy to lock that rear wheel. So, the rear brake could definitely do with some more gentle tuning. 
While the clutch levers seemed to be pretty light to operate, I found the gearbox to be rather clunky to operate, finding myself having to kick through gears with quite a bit of effort. However, no sign of pseudo neutrals in between gears, which is great news. And then comes the performance of the new Sherpa 450. While I am super excited to see Royal Enfield enter a new era of tech, I am afraid that they are still far from producing the level of refinement you would get from a bike of this segment. While the engine did perform very well in terms of numbers, I found it rather rough running and temperamental in some scenarios. Trundling along traffic below 2500 rpm, the engine tends to knock a bit and riding the motorcycle above 5000 rpm invites an orchestra of vibrations through the tank, the handlebars and the foot pegs, giving you a rather small margin of rpm where the bike runs smoothly. After a thorough day with both these machines, it is pretty safe to say that both of them make very good competitors against each other, especially in the segment that they're in. Both of them are very similarly priced and both of them cover up for each other's weaknesses, making it such a tight fight. The KTM 390 Adventure X is a light, nimble, fast motorcycle that really loves going outdoors. However, it is falling a little bit short from its standard variant since it doesn't have the suspension setup you would love to have. However, the 450X is a real off-roader. It is unfazed by any form of terrain or obstacle. However, in terms of dynamics, it could be a little better and it is not as refined an engine as the second generation LC4. So, in my opinion, if I needed to do long tours and hit the off-road Occasionally, I would pick the Adventure X just because of how refined an engine it is and just how fun it is on the road. But if I'm the kind of person that is going to be hitting the off-road much more often, I would just pick the 450X because of how capable it is. That being said, do let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. Would you pick the 450X with its brand new engine or would you still stick to the fastest sub 500cc ADV in the segment? the 390 Adventure X. That's all from my side. See you guys in the next one.